All right, so now we're working on 8.3 functions and equations. That starts on page 595, so please be ready to take some notes. So the first thing that we're going to work on is our vocabulary startup, and we're going to talk about a linear function, and it's very straightforward. A linear function is a function whose graph is a line. I know, shocker, right? Linear function is a graph of a line. So I'd like for you to go ahead and fill in this, um, this uh, graphic organizer, and I'll come back. Pause now. All right, so um, linear means the graph is a line. Um, everyday de definition for function, well, I'm a math person, so my everyday definition for function is a pattern or rule, um, which is also the math definition. Um, so you could have had something different for this, but this is what I'm going with. Uh, what do you notice about the graph? Hopefully you notice that it's a line. It's linear. Real world link. Babysitting. The table shows the amount of money Carly earns based on the number of hours she babysits. And look at this cute little baby. Let's give it a little mustache. Yes. Yes, it's a cute baby with a little stash. All right. All right, so it says write a sentence that describes the relationship between the number of hours she babysits and her earnings, and does she earn the same amount each hour? So I'd like for you to solve one and two, and I'll be right back with the answer. So go ahead and pause, please, and just stare at that adorable baby. All right, here are my answers. So basically, Carly earns $6 per hour, and... Um, she does earn the same amount each hour. So if you look over here, for one hour, she earns $6. Two, hour, two hours, she earns 12 Three hours, 18 Four hours, 24 So it's obviously going to be however many of the hours, which I'm calling my X, it's times 6. And that's going to equal my earnings, which I'm calling my Y. So write, a, sorry, write an equation to represent a function. You can use an equation to represent a function. The input or independent variable represents the x value. Remember, our input is our x. And the output or dependent variable represents our y. So remember that our output is the y. Um, remember that the input determines what the y is going to be. So um, in exam for example, that last one we talked about babysitting, based on how many hours she worked, determined how much money she was going to make. So her amount of money that she was going to make was dependent upon, dependent upon how many hours she worked, which is the independent variable. All right, so number one, it says write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. Input. And it gives us um, the inputs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the output is 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. And you might see that as this is going up by 1, this is going up by 9. So that's a, pure, um, a, a very good indicator that we're multiplying times 9. So our input times 9 equals our output. So x times 9 equals y. So, um, and they always like to put our y first. So this is how we would actually write it, with our y equals 9 times x. All right, so in the equation, d equals 36 times t, where d is the distance traveled and t is the time, which variable is independent and which is dependent? So here's the thing. Does the distance traveled indicate what the time is? Or does the time that you've traveled indicate the distance that you go? Now, I would say that the independent variable is the time. That's going to be my x, and that, that's my independent variable. And my distance that I've driven is going to equal my y, which is my output, my dependent variable. So remember that independent is our x, and dependent is our y. So it says write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. So go ahead and pause the video now. When you come back, I'll have the answer. Okay, hopefully you figured out that your function rule would be y equals 16 times x. Because if x is 1, the y was 16. When x is 2, 
it's 32, which is really 2 times 16 equals 32. So if you notice that um, each of those would work, then you know that you're correct. And that's the way that you want to do it. So don't, don't just do one. Keep continuing that pattern and make sure it works for every one of them, especially if they give you the input-output table all filled in. So graph linear functions. You can also graph a function. If the graph is a line, the function is then called a linear equation. When graphing a function, the input is the x-coordinate and the output is the y. And we've already talked about this with our Dix and Roy, where the input is our x and the output is our y. So x comma y is the same as um, input comma output. All right, so just make note of that, that don't forget that our input are, is our x and our output is our y. Number two example says y equals two times x. Make a table of ordered pairs, select any three values for x, and substitute these values for, to, for x to find y. Now here's the thing, for us all to get the same answer, I'd like for you guys to use the same numbers. There are going to be occasions where you're going to use something different, and we'll come across that when we do. Um, but I'd like for you just to automatically use always three, because that gives us a true line. And um, I'd like for you to use zero, one, and two whenever we can. So zero, one, and two. Zero, one, and two. So two times zero is zero. Two times one is two. And two times two is four. And so when we make our ordered pairs, that's going to be our x comma y. So 0 comma 0, 1 comma 2, and 2 comma 4. Then we're going to graph each of our ordered pairs and draw a line through each point. If it becomes a straight line, then we know that we have a linear function um, and a linear equation. So our 0 comma 0 is here, and then our 1 comma 2 is here, and then our uh, 2 comma 4 is here. And sure enough, when we connect those, it's a beautiful straight line. Um, obviously, using graph paper or um, already having a graph prepared for you is the best way to be able to see that straight line because if we make our own, we're not you know, distancing everything perfectly. And so sometimes it may not look like a straight line when it really is. So using graph paper is key here. All right, so you're going to do examples B and C. And I'd like for you to go ahead and make the table, our input-output table. And I like how they did this last one. Notice that they did our x, our function, our y, and our ordered pair. So let's go ahead and make our table where it has four parts to it. Okay? Um, this is our x and our y and our x comma y. And in the middle here, we're going to do our function, which... They usually use this little lowercase um, italicized F. And in here, if I can fit it, let's see if I can squeeze in here, X plus 1. So go ahead and solve these out. Um, you're going to do the same setup for uh, C. And remember that we're using 0, 1, and 2. And if we're all using the same numbers, it's going to be a lot easier for us to check our answers. All right, so 0, 1, and 2 are our x values, 0, 1, and 2. Go ahead and solve for b and c, and when you come back, I'll have the answers. All right, so for b, using 0, 1, 2, I end up with an ordered pair of 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3, which I went ahead and graphed here for b. And if you connect the dots, you end up finding that you have a straight line. For C, unfortunately when I used my 0, 1, 2, it went off their little grid that they gave me, which I'm kind of surprised they gave us such a small grid. Um, I went 0, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 8, and I just kind of estimated where that last one was going to be, um, but it is a straight line. And so these are both, both linear equations. So example number three, it says Martino constructed the graph shown which shows the height of his cactus after after several years of growth. Make a function table for the input output values. So the three input values are 1, 2, and 3. So again this is the years 
that was our input and the height that it grew that's our excuse me that's our output our y value because the independent variable is the years and the height that it grows is dependent on how many years it's been so that's why um, our output is our dependent variable which is height so um, it tells us that after one year it's 42 inches after two years it's 44 inches and after three years it's 46 inches so they want us to um, so they already told us, you know, that 1, 2, and 3, and then that it was going to be 42, 44, and 46 in that order. When we plotted them on here, which they've already done for us, we've got our three points here, and when we connect them, it's a straight line, so this is a linear equation. Example number four says write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the height. And I think that's a, that's a really good question. So you notice that in year one, it was 42. Year two, it's 44. In year three, it's 46. So what it's telling me is that when they first got it, it didn't start as a seed. It wasn't zero, and then in one year jumped up to 42, and then only increased by two each year. It sounds like it started at 40 inches, and then worked its way up each year by two inches. So um, what I'm going to say is y equals, and they've already got it here for us, but we know that it must have started at 40 inches, and that every year it goes up by two. So it's two times the years plus the 40 inches it started with and that is its total height. So for instance after one year it went two inches plus the 40 inches it started out at to make it 42. After two years it grew four inches total plus the 40 it started with to equal 44 inches. So um, I hope you can see where, where we would come up with that um, equation. All right, so because now you're going to do this on your own. It says to graph the follow the, the graph shows the total amount Y that you spend if you buy one book and X magazines. Make a function table for the input-output values and write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the total amount y if you buy one book in x magazines. So we're looking for that function rule. Um, remember that this is our x and this is our y. Go ahead and fill in the graph if you can and when you come back I'll have those answers for you. Really test yourself and make sure that you know what you're doing here. Um, remember that you can go ahead and write your ordered pairs. Okay and then you'll have your x comma y's right there and you can just say oh, okay here's all our x's we're gonna put that right here here's all our y's we'll put that right here so I'm just giving you an idea write your ordered pairs and then you can put all your x's together and all your y's together and see how that works out for you go ahead and pause now alright so here's what I have um, I did my ordered pairs. My first dot right here is um, 1 comma 20. Then I have 2 comma, and at first I was like, oh, how am I going to figure this out? But if I look to 3, I see that's right back on the line, and I look to 4, and it's in the middle again. So I, I got a really good impression that that's going to be 2 comma 25, and then 3 comma 30, and 4 comma 35. Um, usually I would say this is a very unfortunate graph because they didn't tell us what those in-between numbers were. They're just assuming we're going to figure it out, which I think is a little sketchy. But we work with what we have. So um, you can fill in your X values and your Y values. Your X values are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And your Y values are 20, 25, 30, and 35. So it's saying that um, the total amount you're spending and the number of magazines um, here's how I set it up. It looks to me like if I were to go one down this way and it was zero magazines that I would be at 15. Does everybody kind of get that idea that I'm talking about here? That if this is going in a line, which it is, and I'm going down by five, when I'm at zero magazines, I'm going to be at $15. So if I bought no magazines, I'm spending $15. If we're talking about buying one book in X magazines, can anybody tell me how much that book is costing us? I hope that you notice that it's 15. The book is going to cost us $15 because if we spent, if we bought zero magazines, we would still be spending $15 on the book. 
Now, it looks to me that if you are increasing by $5 every time we get a new magazine, that the magazines must cost $5 each. So I've set up my 5 times X plus 15. If I plug in these values, and it should work for every one of them, um, 5 times, let's say, 3 magazines plus 15. This is going to be $15 plus $15 for the book, which equals $30, and that's exactly what I have here. You can try it with another one if you'd like. You can say, okay, um, we've got five times four magazines. That's $20 on magazine, $15 on a book, a total spending of 35 and that would be correct as well. So um, you should be able to use it with every single one of these, and it will work. That's why it's the function rule, because it will work every time. All right, so that concludes our 8.3 functions and equations. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you bring them to me tomorrow at school or when we do see each other again at school. Thank you.